Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Following our service this morning, we're having our voters meeting. We will be holding it in the fellowship hall. Uh, and if you want the refreshments, you have to go to the fellowship hall. So, um, also the light chain is taking place today. Uh, there's a flyer in the back and an announcement in the bulletin. And if you didn't put money in the big mic box on your way in, make sure you put money in the mic box on your way out. <laughs> Anything else, Joanne? I said that, oh, uh, Wednesday, we'll be putting together any bit of time on the house. I put the time at 3 o'clock. What time? We're going to put together for Lutheran World's Relief the school, uh, the school bags and the personal kits and get them in boxes and ready to go. Okay, it's announcements in the bulletin, but Wednesday afternoon they're going to be putting together the care packets, right? Well, yeah, all the backpacks with the school kids that they're serving those, and there's 16 of the first one, which is a towel and all of the stuff that goes with Okay. So if you have some time Wednesday afternoon to help out, that would be awesome. Anything else? The peace of the Lord be with you always. We'll continue to begin our service with the first hymn. Please stand for the last verse.
the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to thy infinite mercy, seeking and imploring thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given us sons and Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and hath given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgiveth us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he giveth power to become the sons of God, and hath promised him his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Deal with thy servants according to thy mercy. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord.
grace to withstand the temptations of the devil, and with pure hearts and minds follow thee, the only God. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. In regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church. As for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the servant passing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him his death, and so, somehow, to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Here ends the epistle lesson. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. Hallelujah. Tenants to collect his fruit. 
The tenant seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time. And the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied. He will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him a share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone the builders has rejected has become the capstone? The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who produce fruit. He who falls upon this stone will be broken to pieces, but he on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. Here ends the Gospel reading. We join in the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed.
God you from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Paul was quite a guy. He uh, really had to confront, be confronted by Jesus directly for him to change. He was very, very much into living the Jewish life. But by God's grace, he realized it was faith he was saved by. But that dichotomy, that challenge between people who believed totally in faith and people who believed in works, continued. It continues to this day. But notice what Paul says about himself. I've always enjoyed this. If anyone thinks he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. In regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, for as, as for legalist righteousness, faultless. Yeah. How often we have a tendency to look at what we've accomplished and forget what God has accomplished. How often we, we, we look at numbers and we look at money and we look at success as somehow measures of things that are important. And Paul had it all. He was in the hierarchy of the Sanhedrin. He was sent up to Damascus with letters of authority to persecute the Christians. And God had a different plan. And through the course of Paul's remaining life, he went through an awful lot. He was slandered. He was distrusted. He was flogged. He was stoned and left for dead. Paul said, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. All that stuff, my righteousness, my legalism, my, my genetics, all of that was worthless for the sake of knowing Christ Jesus. My Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness on my own that comes from the law, but which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. You know, it's amazing how often we get trapped in the false focus. We get trapped in looking toward a retirement, putting money away. We get trapped into getting a better job. We get trapped into having better health. We get trapped into having the latest gizmo and lose sight of the goal. We lose sight of the target. And we bemoan when we lose stuff. I remember when I was a financial advisor during the dot-com bubble when it burst, and all these people went into a panic. Look at all the money we lost. It's the end of the world. And most of them had as much or a little more than when they started. But they were watching the stock market. They were counting on the stock market. They had their nest. They were looking at the economy. They are looking at everything in this life and losing sight of the goal, heaven. I want to know Christ. One of the early converts to Christianity came to the disciples and said, Sir, I want to see Jesus. You see, that is the sole source of the hope we have, is in Jesus and the Christ. It's not in denomination, it's not in wrenches, it's not riches, it's not in faith, uh, faithful attendance, it's in Jesus. The total expectation of everything is in Jesus. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings 
Well, right there, let's stop. <laughs> How much really do we want to share in Jesus' sufferings? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, you know, if we could avoid it, we would. And yet, look at Paul. He understood what it was. The reality of following Jesus means everything else is worthless. Now, remember where Paul is when he's writing this letter. He's in prison in Rome. Probably 63, 64 AD. It's after his first trial, before his second trial. Remember, he asked to go to Rome and plead his case before Caesar. And they said, okay. Well, he had his first hearing. It was kind of a hung jury. And they put him in jail. He was looking at the end of his life. He was looking at the end of everything he had done. He was looking at what next. And that's something we need to be doing as well. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold for that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which the Lord God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul was goal-focused. He knew where to keep his mind. On that great and glorious day of resurrection, that great and glorious day of the body of Christ being brought together, of joining that throng of those washed in white, those who had come out of the great tribulation whose robes had been washed in the blood of the Lamb. That was his focus. That was his goal. He was goal-focused. Now, I don't know if you realize how many times in our life we are truly goal-focused. The LWML, they prayerfully consider a goal to attend, a certain level of funds for doing mission. And that's kind of exciting, because in all the meetings, they never said, well, what we did last year, or what we did the year before. No, they focus on the goal ahead of them. Believe it or not, when I was a young, young man, I was a middle and long distance runner. And it's an amazing challenge. You start out, and you're moving along and moving along. And that's one lap down. That's two laps down. That's three laps down. Four laps down. I got to keep going. <laughs> you knew where the target was, the finish line. That's where you had to focus. And if you looked over your shoulder, you would lose a step. And somebody would pass you. So you never look behind you. You might glance side to side, but you're really looking straight ahead, looking at the goal. My question has to be asked, are we truly goal focused? I mean, so much of our life is consumed with right here, not out there. What's going to happen next week? I don't know. What's going to happen in four weeks? I don't know. What's going to happen in a year? I don't know. I do know that whatever happens next week and four weeks or six months later, the goal doesn't change. It's part of the race looking to arrive at heaven, to taking hold of that crown of righteousness which is laid out for us, that crown purchased by the blood of Jesus, to be focused there. And not look behind them. But you know we like to look behind. We have anniversaries, you know. Trinity has our 150th anniversary coming up next year. Yeah. I want to look back and see all the, well, yeah, but what next? Where are we going to go? 
How are we going to be focused on Jesus and heaven? How are we going to help other people be focused in Jesus and on heaven? Because that's the goal that we need to be goal focused. Oh, it's all too easy to get tired. It's all too easy to sit on the sideline. It's all too easy to say, Coach, I just don't think I can make that last lap. But we dare not do that. We dare not do that. Many have done that. Many have gone from and strayed from the truth of the Word of God. Many have followed their ideas and, and become societally active, become socially aware, and have become consumed with being effective. And of course, church attendance is what people look at. It's been amazing to me in district discussions where we start looking at, will the church survive? How can the church survive? We need to have at least 100, that was 125, lately I heard 150, to support a full-time pastor. That is not goal-focused. Goal-focused is however many people are gathered together in his name are looking to take hold of the crown of righteousness. That's being goal-focused. And that's the challenge you and I have. We get halfway through the race, and we say, I'm tired. And I've heard many senior members of the body of Christ say, I'm going to let the younger generation do it. I did my time. Not being goal focused. <laughs> the challenge for us is to keep our eyes fixed on the prize, to keep our eyes looking toward that which has been promised for us, and to press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So no matter what happens in this life. Keep your eyes on the prize. No matter what horrible things may happen, keep your eye on the prize. When you get up in the morning, the body creaks and groans, and you go, oh, keep your eye on the prize. Always keep your eye on the prize. And never lose your focus. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings. For a full measure of the Holy Spirit to keep our eyes focused on your Son. Focused on the prize he purchased for us with his blood on the cross. We ask that you would strengthen us each day. Direct us and guide us. And let all things work to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all our free and human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus to Christ. I invite you to stand this morning instead of the commitment of the fellowship. We will be sharing the LWML pledge. Please stand. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love. Almighty and everlasting God, who art worthy to be held in reverence by all the children of men, 
We give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which, without any merit or worthiness on our part, thou hast bestowed upon us. We praise thee especially that thou hast preserved unto us in their purity thy saving word and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace and to grant unto thy holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach thy word with power and help all who hear, hear rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send forth laborers into thy harvest, and open the door of faith unto all the heathen and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of thy church, and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. And may we, in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith, and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth, especially do we entreat thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause thy glory to dwell among us, and let mercy and truth, righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end we commend thy care all our schools and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his work an appropriate calling and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and Father of the widow and the father of his children, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Except we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offering brought before thee, which is our reasonable service. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for the fellowship here at Trinity, for the people you have brought together. We ask that you continue to bless our fellowship with all the resources of time, talent, and treasure necessary to meet the many opportunities that you have before us. We ask our, your blessing on our shut-ins, Ray Mitzka, Dick, uh, Ruth Carlton, Lord, and all those who are unable to be with us, we ask that you would be with them and strengthen them. We rejoice and give you thanks that Bob came through his surgery successfully, and we ask that you speed his recovery. We ask for continued uh, healing for, for Gary Wolf. We lift up before you, Lauren, Kitchell's daughter, stage three cancer. Lord, you are the physician of body and soul, and into your hands we entrust all those who are suffering in any way. Lord, we give you thanks for the many ministries you allow us to participate in. We ask a blessing on our Living Word congregation and Moses as he continues his training to become their pastor. We lift up before you, Bob, and all pastors, that they may be fully and inspired by your spirit to hold fast to the truth, to strain toward the goal, to all take hold of life. We ask a blessing on our child care, that you continue to bless them, uh, parents and children, staff and teachers, that this place is again known as a place where your love is made manifest. We give you thanks for a successful heart adjustment from Harry and ask that you would continue to bless her in all of her challenges. Uh, we ask a blessing for uh, Deacon William Orsinski uh, from Hope Goodells as he continues to heal from a stroke. We ask a blessing on uh, St. Luke Project 52's clinic, new paid nursing staff, and expansion of feasibility of Franklin Avenue Mission in Flint. We ask a blessing for Dr. Craig and Mary Oldenburg upon the death of Mary's father, Arthur Brown. We rejoice and give thanks for the gift of life and ask a blessing for Reverend Chris and Amanda Young upon the birth of a baby girl. And we ask a blessing for Becky Grossman and for a successful bonding team treat as part of Lutheran Bible Translating Mission. Lord, all of your servants strive toward the goal, 
Equip them for all the tasks you have for them. Lord, we lift up before you our military, those who go in harm's way on our behalf. We ask that you would give them honesty and integrity, bless and protect them. Ask a blessing upon their families during the periods of separation. We ask a blessing on our chaplains as they share your word. We ask that you would allow them to share the word without hindrance or interruption, to boldly proclaim the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask a blessing upon our spiritual governance, our district president, our synodic president. In times of confusion and chaos, we ask that you give them the stalwart confidence in your word. Help them be confident in the profession of your name. Lord, we ask a blessing upon our civil governments, our state legislature, our governor, our president, our congress. Lord, we've lifted these folks up to serve us. And we ask that that happen. Lord, we ask a blessing upon President Trump as he's going through Corona. We ask that he recover quickly. And all those who go in harm's way at this time, who serve on the front lines, we ask that you would protect them and ask that you would give them strength to do the tasks you've assigned to them. We ask a blessing upon our emergency responders, our EMTs, our firefighters, our police officers. Lord, they willingly go where others flee. We ask that you would protect and defend them as they continue to serve us. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work thou hast given us to do while it is day, before the night cometh when no man can work, and when our last hour shall come. Support us by thy power, and receive us into thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, forever and ever. Our Father, pray. Grant we beseech thee, Almighty God, unto thy church, thy Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which becometh that we may not be bound, but have free course, and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve thee, and in the confession of thy name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Kind of interesting when you take a road trip. You know, we get, get the GPS, right? We get all the stuff plugged in, and then our road's closed. That's why we always have an atlas in the car. So we go back to the old atlas. But whether we use GPS or atlas, we know where we're going. We may have some sidetracks in our life, but we know where we're going. As we gather as his people, leave with his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.
Remember, Otis meeting in the fellowship hall. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be God. Let's try that in there. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be God. And all God's people declare. Amen. And remember, put your money in the mic.